Hi, this is Rob from Intelligent Irrigation, and we're back at Elizabeth's house, and we're going to do the install in the middle garden. Now, as you can see, we've got a 4x12, and we're going to do this one, uh, the racetrack design, and we're going to do a little different. What we're going to do on this one is we're going to come in over here on the side like this and come down, and then we're going to come over that way and feed both that way. That way we're not slamming down into the tee and causing the water to split, so we'll keep a better flow going in the circular racetrack design. So we want to show you how we're going to do that, and we'll install all the steps in the video. So let's get going with the installation. Okay, so we're going to take you through this installation step by step. And as you can see, i got everything laid out on the 4x12. i got the four footers with the couplers there adapters that are going to go on the end with the cross piece that's two feet wide the couplers so now I could work and I'm going to start from here because this is where we're going to start so the water is going to come into the bed here and I'm going to cross it and bring the aqua jets out right there so I got everything I need right here and I'm also going to lock it into the wood so we'll get started with that okay so this is where it comes into the bed we're going to start off with the activator this was a turn it on and off with the ball valve so that's where we're going to start is with the ball valve right here we're also going to come in with the hose feed with the hose bib right here so this is where we're going to start it and the way i'm going to do it is i'm going to put this together i got a three uh bushing here which is a one inch to three quarters and i'll put it in this ball valve and then what i'm <coughs> going to do is <coughs> take this which is three quarter hose right you see it's got a gap in the middle where you can grab onto <coughs> i'm going to screw that into here and then the hose will go on to here. Now I'm coming out here into the bed with the aqua jet. So this is where we're starting. And this is what I'm going to start to do. I'm going to glue this into here. And then I'll come with the PVC and come out. So that's where we're going from here. Okay, now you're going to get ready to glue it into the ball valve. So you want to get your PVC. And you want to make sure that it's longer than what you need. You can see in this case we have a two foot piece that we just twist in to the ball valve, let the glue dry, and now you're ready to put on your first L, which will bring the system down. So you take your L and make your measurement, hold the ball valve where you want it to be, put your L on there where it kind of hugs right inside the inside of the bed liner, and you can take your thumb and mark where you want to cut it. Hold your thumb there and then you get your ratchet and PVC cutters and you cut it to length. And now you're ready to put your first L on. You want to make sure that you line it up perpendicular with the top of the valve so it's at the 6 and 12 o'clock position or the north-south position so it goes straight down and not off to the side. Remember, you only have a couple seconds to get it right before the glue dries. So you put it on, give it a twist, and then line it up real quick. Where it goes straight up and down. Remember, you only have a few seconds before the glue grabs it and you won't be able to twist anymore. Now we got it to go straight up and straight down. And you're ready for your next section. we're going to come this way with it to our T to make come out and then across to the L. So what we need to do now is get the height because this is going to determine the height on how high the aqua jet actually is. So we're going to measure that out right now. Okay so now we're ready to measure the depth. As you can hear we got our fan club in the background sharing us on so we hope that don't distract you too much but um, that's just kind of part of this installation. So what, I, what I'm going to do now is we know that the soil is going to come up to the top here. Liz says she's going to fill it all the way up. Therefore, I know that four inches down from here is where the aqua jet should be. So what I want to do is make my mark. So I got my tape measure, I got my sharpie, and I'm going to make a four inch mark on here. If you already have soil in there, the easiest thing to do is just trench four inches and lay the aqua jet in there. 
The soil will support it. The aquajet won't sink. It will only go down if your soil breaks down and goes down. If it does, you just reach down, pick it up a little, the trench back fills, and it stays. But if you don't have any soil in it and you want to do it, you need to have a benchmark, and we know that this is it. So we're going to go four down, four inches down from the top, mark it, come across, and that's the level of the aquajet. So I've got my trusty tape and a four inch level right there. Okay, so that's the four inch level and I could use that for my reference now for the insulation. So I know how far now to come down before I go over and uh, that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, so what I need to do now is measure four inches down before we come over because I got a lot of excess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some of this off so I can come on down with it. So uh, let's say about, just to be safe, I'll cut about that much right there. going to be mounted like so on there. I have my four inch mark right here. What I do is I get this L right here and you want the bottom of the L to be there. So what you need to do is um, you need to get an aqua jet adapter because as you can see the watering where it's going to be watering down here is actually lower. So on something like this it would, it would look like this. So therefore your T has to be up higher than the four inches. Tell you right now, it has to be at three inches because this is an inch from there to there. So what I want is uh, the three inch level on the T right here, which will put the aqua jet at the four inch level. So what we're going to do now is measure the three inch, mark it right there, so we know where to come over, and then we know the aqua jet's going to be on the four inch level. So that's what we're going to do right now. You go back to the tape measure. I'm going to mark the three inches right above there. So there you go. So that's where we want the bottom of this L to be. So what I mean is, there's the three inches right there. You bring that L, it's gonna be right there, coming along. So when you put the AquaJet adapter on, as you come out, it's actually gonna be watering right here at the four inch level. Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now, is I'm gonna place this right here, and I'm gonna place this at the four inch level. And I can tell you, if you cut it, you cut it, measure the PVC to the top of this L, and that will be the perfect measurement because your PVC will come right to the bottom of that. So what you do is you put that where you want it at the three inch level, hold this right there, and where I'm gonna cut is right at the top of this T right here. And that way I know that I'm gonna be right at the three inch level. Okay, so you need to make the mark. And I know that this mark is just a little bit into the C of the PVC, so I already know where to cut it. to use ratcheting PVC colors. They're straight and they're easy. Okay, so now, I know when I go down like this, and I bring this up, like so, to come over, I know that's going to be right there at the three inch level, right where I want it. So now I'm going to glue this on, and we're going to come over to get to the first leg of the aqua jet. Okay, so now what we want to do is get where we're going to place the aqua jets. And the way to do that is sometimes beds vary a little bit. Most of them are four feet ID. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the ID, which is inside to inside. Okay. I have 44 inches. Take that number, divide it by four. And we know that 44 divided by 11 is, or, yeah, it's four. So we're going to make it 11 inches because 11 is a magic number now. So 11 inches off of this over and 11 inches from there over is going to center the racetrack design. So what I want to do is come 11 inches and make a mark. Okay, 11 inches from the inside, not the outside. So, come along here, make my mark at 11 inches. Same thing over here. Okay, I got 11 inches. Now I know where the aqua jet goes, and now I know the depth, and now we can continue to put this together. Okay, so we got this in right here. As you see, here's our configuration so far. As we're going piece by piece, we come in, over, down, up. We're just going to come out this way. So we made our lines where the line's going to be. So we'll set this where we, where we need it. And what we have here is the first T, which is going to go right here. 
So our first tee is right here. As you can see, the water can come through and go out there and pass through. But the important thing is it's not slamming into a wall. If the water was coming in this way, like this, it comes down, hits that wall, and has to split. And I know that, that that's where our other insulations have been, but we found a better way to help the water flow, and that is you come in on the side like this or underneath from the side and run it along that way, and you, you get the bends, and you don't get a, what they call bullheading as it comes down and slams and have to split. So now i got my marks. i got to lock this in so it stays consistent, and after I lock that in, I come back with my teeth right there. So we're going to go ahead and do that and then come back and, and continue from there on camera. Okay, so here's our configuration now. We got the ball valve. We come out here, down, across to our first T that comes out to the aqua jet, over to the L, which comes out to the second aqua jet. Now all they got to do is install the aqua jet. We're going to put the adapter. Of course, these need to be cut down, but put the adapter on like so, and then this is going to go in like so, and then you're going to have the aqua jet. So we're almost ready to install the rails and when we get to that point it's going to come pretty quick because we're just going to go down gluing on the couplers get to the end bring around the racetrack design so you guys how we do that so we'll be back with you next uh and down at the end of the bed after we get these in so we're going to we're going to go ahead and glue these off camera we don't want to bore you with everything we'll glue them off camera so when we come back we'll be gluing the first coupler on the aqua jet as we go down okay so now i've got the aqua jet in over there and I'm just coming along the couplers and we just keep coupling it together until we get to the very end. You can see once again the configuration that we have here. So it's a better flow, no dead heading. When, let me show you what I mean. Is we got this coming in from the side and you'll see it makes a nice little bend like that and then a nice little 90 there and a 90 there as opposed to coming down in the middle where we have to hit and split. So we think this is a better flow and we'd like to thank Richard Guthrie from Phoenix for bringing that to our attention. So this is why we're setting it up at the side. So I'm going to go down there and continue with the dual race jet until we get to the end. I'll show you how I put that in. Now. Okay, so now we're at the end and we're going to put the crossbar that makes it to circular. And so what I got here is a one inch piece of PVC and this is an inch and a quarter to one inch. The reason is it'll go in on the one inch there and the inch and a quarter on this side will go right over on the adapter. You see, so you put both adapters on here and it's, this is two feet wide that I, because we know we need it, so you put it there and this is where the aqua jet will be going. And this I do a circular design, but well, actually it'll be up here. But before we do that, we have it up here so we can now flush the system. So we're going to flush the system. And after we flush it, we're going to close it off with this, and then it's a closed system, ready to go, and ready to test fire. So right now we're going to do the flush, and we'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so we're going to bring the water source in so we can flush it. So as you see, we got the ball valve here, and told you we're bringing in a hose. So the first thing we need to do is change it from pipe thread to hose thread. So we're going to use this right here, which is pipe thread, to screw into this ball valve right here. On the other side is pipe thread also, but then we're going to put the fitting on it that transitions from pipe thread to hose thread so the hose can plug in. So right now i got some PVC, it's actually called plumber's faucet and valve grease that you put on here. It will kind of seal and allows you to screw it all the way into the PVC because PVC with threads get stuck and you can never screw them all the way in so that's why you got this right here and you'll be able to screw it all the way in so this is going to start where our hose is going to come in and we wanted to show you that so what you do is you just put that on and tighten it up now I got a the fitting as you see has a bar right there where there's no thread so I can grab onto it and make sure I get it nice and tight see right there there's no threads so it allows me to get either vice grips or some channel locks that you can turn it with and get it nice and tight. Okay. Okay, so you can see it gets started at the end, but that's actually not bad because the grease allows you, or otherwise, you only get half the threads in there. So, 
I'm just going to get this down there a little bit more. Okay, as you can see, all the threads are gone on this side. So now we're ready to transition to the pipe to hose thread. And what we do with that is this brass fitting. And this brass fitting has hose thread on that side, pipe thread on that side. So you take the one with pipe thread, as you can see, the it's got a shiny brass. And I'm going to put some grease on there. Okay, and then you roll it around into the threads. Make sure you get all the grease in the threads there. Okay, and that will allow us to get this pipe fitting all the way down on it so it could seal. Because pipe threads don't have rubber grommets or washers like your hoses do. So what they need to do is make contact. The only way you can make contact is if you put that grease on there so you can get it all the way down. Better if you have a wrench that fits it that's this size, but for now, it's getting late, so we're just gonna do it the old fashioned way. <clears throat> okay, now you got all the way on, and now the hose is gonna come directly into here, tighten the hose, and then we'll flush it. Okay, we got the hose hooked up, it's time to flush it. As you see down there, our configuration is, as we've told you before, come in on the side, down and around, got the ball valve right here, and we got the hose hooked up right here. So now we're going to flush it, you can watch it at the other end, and we'll see if any dirt comes out of the rail, especially on the right side. Here we go. Okay, so now getting a good flush here. Right. Okay, remember you always have to flush it to get any debris that may be in there for manufacturing or cutting and especially the dirt. Okay, so everything looks good. Now we're gonna, well, we flushed it enough because it's only 12 feet, so we're gonna go ahead and shut it off now. We know it's clean, cut it to length and put on the end piece, right there. Okay, so you know from earlier in the video, we're using an 11 inch spacing, which is 11 from here to the first one, 11 from here to the first one, which means the second one is 22 inches. So we got a bar here that's 22 inches. So it's gonna be something like this. So we're gonna glue this on right here like so be 22 inches apart. So what we need to do is measure the 22 inches. Okay, so we got a 22 inch spread. In order to keep it at 22, this bar right here needs to be 20 inches long because of the overflow from right here because it's only going to come from right inside to inside. And so 20 inch long bar will make a 22 inch long spread. So we got a 20 inch long 1 inch PVC. You can see our couplers drill are here. It's an inch and a quarter here to an inch. Inch and a quarter because it fits right over the adapter. And then the inch PVC fits right inside there. So what we're going to do now is glue this in. To complete the racetrack design, and show you how to do that. Put it in and give it a twist until it dries. And do the same on this side. Okay. And then you complete it like this. There you go. Now we got our circular design. And that's the racetrack. Okay, so as you can see right now, you don't have any soil in the bed, so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to support it so when you put the soil in, it won't push it down. If you have soil in your bed, 
then all you have to do is, is trench four inches and the soil itself will hold it stable. It won't sink when it gets heavy. The only time it will go down is when your whole bed composts and breaks down. And if that happens and you just pick the aqua jet up like that and the trench will backfill and it will stay at the four inch level. But you do need some on long runs like this when there's no soil in the bed. So we're going to prop it up to keep it at the four inch level. So when the soil goes in, it won't push down. We've had that happen before, so we don't want to repeat that. So we want to make sure that we're propped up. We're using bricks now, but if there was soil in the bed, then, there, then you don't need anything to hold it up because the soil itself will hold it. When the soil breaks down, it, the system sinks. Like I so say, you pick it up a little, the trench backfills on its own, and it will stay at the four inch level. So, okay, so here we are for the test bar. Like I said, we got the end done. As we circulate around, I know that we kind of signed off last time, but we're gonna, <laughs> we forgot to test fire. So we're gonna run, as you see the circular motion, we started up right here. So here we go. Okay, you can see the system run, you see that it starts filling up. And now you see it squirting out. We need to raise this distance just a little to make sure we have an even spray. We're just a little high on this end. We raise it up like that, we're right where we want to be. So, as you see, there's a grid of water coming through here. From me to the end, a crisscross section of water. And as you can see how the whole bed gets wet, and of course, there's the aeration that we talked about before. So, for Rob, this is how. That's it for the aqua jet. We're installed. They're ready to put the soil in the road. We'll come back and do a follow-up video again. So, once again, from Rob, remember to keep watering the intelligent way with the aqua jet.